This is Season 4, Episode 1 of our Reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks. Welcome to Sauble Falls at Sauble Falls Provincial Park. We are Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in Season 4 of our park reviews. We hope this helps you when deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Thanks for coming along, Camping with the Coles. Now we only get one life, I want to make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. We are having a good day because this is the first day of our first trip camping. Woohoo! We are off to Sable Falls. This is the earliest we've ever gone camping. This is the first weekend of May, 2022. Uh, last year, because of COVID restrictions, we couldn't go until June 11th. And before the year before that, because of COVID restrictions, we couldn't go until the first weekend in July. So this is really exciting. We're out the beginning of May. And something that we're gonna do now that we've been meaning to do for a while is we're gonna go get the truck and trailer weight. Hopefully we're not overweight. We're gonna be overweight. Well, the way Cheryl packs, there's a good chance you might be overweight. But we need to get this checked out. We're going to a weight scale. We're gonna weigh the truck and trailer and uh, see how we're doing. So we'll bring you along. GVWR, which is the gross vehicle weight rating for our truck, is 7,050 pounds. You can find that on the uh, driver's door frame of your vehicle. That is the maximum weight limit rating of the weight of your truck and all of its contents. For our trailer, the GVWR is 7,500 pounds. So, when we weighed the truck and trailer combined, it was 14,180 pounds. The actual trailer weight with all of its contents was 7,380 pounds. So that is 120 pounds under the maximum. So I'm very pleased about that. And the truck is 6,800 pounds with uh, it being fully loaded. And I'm very pleased with that. That is 250 pounds under the uh, GVWR. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, a, lot, a lot of our viewers ask why we fill up water at the park and that we uh, don't fill up at home. Well, this is the reason right here. A full tank of fresh water is 407 pounds and that would put us over the uh, trailer's GVWR. So let's cue the uh, traveling music. We're heading to the park. Sable Falls Provincial Park is located on the eastern shore of Lake Huron near Sable Beach in Bruce County. Sable River runs through the park and drains into Lake Huron. It's the perfect base camp to visit Sable Beach and explore the Bruce Peninsula. So one thing we learned rather quickly, when arriving at the park, don't go directly to the uh, main check-in area because uh, you're gonna miss the dump station and the water fill station. You stay on Highway 21, go past the main, uh, the, the road that goes to the main gate, go to the next road to the east campground, pull into the east campground. There's a water fill station and it's threaded so that uh, we can put our water filter on. 
and there's one dump spot and it's also threaded so we can do a black water flush. No matter the rain, no matter the storm, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Leave open the gate, don't turn off the light, I'm coming home. Hey, as I recall, last time we were camping with you, Yes, I was in a tent trailer. You were in a tent trailer, and that and was just last a, fall. And this is a lot more convenient. Wow, <laughs> 25, look at this. 25 minutes that a beer in hand, and that's pretty good. Wow, very nice. Yeah. Hey, and I like the bike rack on it. That is a good bike rack. Oh, whatever gave you the idea to put that bike rack on Well, it? I saw the Camping with the Coles episode of uh, the Jacket mm. Bike Rack by nice. Let's Go Arrow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look at this beauty. This is a new to you, I understand. It is. What year is it? 2017. Nice. Cheryl's already inside checking everything out? Yeah, she already brought gifts. Oh, of course she did. Honestly. I mean, they're from us. They're from both of us. <laughs> you baked a banana bread. Yeah, banana bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it is so much more convenient oh. this is it's it, i'm sure it's obvious to people who already have a travel trailer but the difference is is in, incredible <laughs> <laughs> can you show us what kind of modifications you did to it yeah so one of the things i did it was um pre-wired uh, obviously with the furion pre-wire kit and i put a um a knockoff camera in there that worked fantastic today or on this trip never skipped a beat it was clear the whole way, never lost signal. It's a, I have to check, Liku Lu is, okay. the, is the brand, I think. But um, yeah, very good. And can you, so you can see it even when you're driving down the road, it's not yes. just a backup camera? Yes. So I it's have, like a rear view. It, it, it comes on when you turn on the parking lights. Okay. So your clearance lights, it, the 12 volt, it comes on. It, it's now I have it so that it's angled down so I can see my back bumper. And, oh, okay. And, but one could tip it to make it a rear view camera. Yeah. On okay. the highway. So Very if nice. anybody gets close enough that you can see them in that camera, <laughs> they're within 30 feet of the, tra the trailer. Yeah. They're very close. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Power tongue jack, which it was as, as simple, I'm sure, as it, as it is in that one video that you did on, on it. It is a dead simple thing to do. And then Amazon covers, as I read on the internet, a lot of people said, make sure you cover the electric uh, electrical components and you can still run the tongue jack like you can feel the rocker switch so you can run the tongue jack with the cover i just leave the cover on all the time okay yeah. and uh yeah tire minder uh tpms worked fantastic the whole way monitored the temperature ambient temperature of the tires and the pressures always worked no problem at all there didn't lose signal once put on some camco level levelers these are excellent levelers um, I know some people put them off to the side, but we put them in the center and they work good. And we actually used a set of like Anderson knockoff uh, um, rolling levelers to get oh, level see. here too. So oh, yeah, yeah. I think they're the Camco style rockers like you guys have. Oh yeah. Not only does it secure the trailer, it, it makes leveling much easier. So yeah. So uh, you went all out. You didn't Kinda. just you didn't just buy this thing and uh, ease into it. You bought it and went crazy and I set it up. I had the distinct advantage of having somebody tell me all the stuff I'm going to need, and I went ahead and got it, and I'm glad I did. So I mean, one could go overboard, but I didn't go overboard. I think I got just where I needed to be on this stuff. So this is really nice. I think you're going to be very happy with this. All right, let's head out for a tour of the park. There are two campgrounds separated by County Road 13 with a total of 176 electric and 72 non-electric sites. West Campground has 55 electric and 40 non-electric sites. It is radio and generator free. East Campground has 21 electric and 32 non-electric sites. There's a day use area that has the park's children's playground, also has tetherball, beach volleyball, horseshoe pits, basketball court, and a picnic shelter all within easy walking distance to the falls. There are three comfort stations, two in West Campground and one in East. 
and there are two EV charging stations right here. Canoes, kayaks, and paddle boats are available for rent. There's one hiking trail. It's a two and a half kilometer loop. It's called the Sobble Trail, and it's in the East Campground. Cell service is excellent for Kudo, Bell, Telus, Virgin Mobile. Those are the ones I can speak of. Full service, you can stream anything. You're good to go. This looks like an excellent site with water access at site number 125. All the sites along this row appear to be a good size, all waterfront, very nice. This is the West Campground Comfort Station. This is the East Campground Comfort Station. Uh, again, it looks like a fairly new building. It's in great shape. Uh, seven showers, washrooms, and uh, laundry facilities. All of the comfort stations are handicap accessible. So we're gonna try out a new little segment here. Uh, we found that the comfort stations in all the campgrounds are pretty standard uh, for all the parks throughout Ontario. They're, they're generally pretty good, but something that varies widely are the outhouses. Vault toilets. Vault toilets, privies, loo, uh, whatever you want to call it. They vary widely and uh, Cheryl really is an expert in that sort of thing because she tries them all out. <laughs> so Cheryl's going to try to do a uh, little review of the uh, outhouses and vault toilets and things like that. So and for a final rating, she's going to rate it either a flower or a skunk. Cat. So we're going to try out the little segment, see if it goes over well. If not, maybe we won't do it anymore. But uh, here it is. Time for Cheryl's Lou Review. Success. So I've been to a few of the vault toilets in this park and I'm pretty happy with them. They're all pretty similar and they have the uh, sink, soap, and they have um, motion sensor lights, which I don't see in very many parks, which is a good thing for when it's dark in the evening. So overall, We'll give this a flower. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep? Every night, and what's it dreaming of? I wonder.
How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? It really makes me wonder. During spring, the uh, fish are spawning and they're heading upstream, so they are plentiful. Uh, we've seen a few fishermen here, and our buddy Dilly, he's going to see if he can catch himself some trout. To make the ground shine like cold until winter comes, until winter comes, until winter comes. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. That was a wild ride down those falls. Oh no, the GoPro wasn't working as I traveled down the falls. Oh well. If you're coming to the falls, there's a big parking lot at the top of the falls, so you can walk down and check them out. Now it says there's a fee station here, and it is paid parking, but that's only for people that don't have a park permit. So if you're already registered to camp here, you can park here for free, you don't need to pay anything. If you have a park permit for any Ontario Provincial Park, that permit is good for here also, you don't have to pay. So if you're visiting another park, like what we used to do, we always, uh, camped at McGregor Point and we do a road trip and come up here and visit the falls. It doesn't cost anything to come in here because your park permit is valid at all parks. This is the main Sobble Beach area. This is a destination beach town and it is packed in the summertime. It's paid parking all along the beach road. You gotta slow down and look around you, son. Today is just today and not tomorrow. Where you're going, you can rest your head. Where you're going, brightness the Behind me is where the Sobble River empties into Lake Huron. And then, if you look down towards the actual town of Sobble Beach, it's beach as far as the eye can see. I shone bright and my journey was over What I sought when I ran Was back where I began No matter the rain No matter the storm I'm coming home I'm coming home 
We've opened the gate Don't turn off the light I'm coming home So we're just a couple hundred meters from the top of Sobel Falls and this is where the Rankin River joins the Sobel River. But the Rankin River is an 18 kilometer canoe route that starts north of here and comes down here. And uh, it is said to be the best novice to intermediate canoe route in Ontario. We'll save that for another day. I can maybe do it myself. Unless I go upside down. Big turn. Oh, you're gonna go under. Oh, oh! Cheryl, what's happening here? Okay. She needed a hat. So I said, I think I got one at the bottom. <laughs> so you have an extra hat that you bring paddling with you. Oh well, yeah. Well. And why is that? In case I didn't have one, then I'd have one to wear. So it's because you're always prepared. <laughs> Socks, I should put them on. No. <laughs> My hair wet. Because <laughs> I fell in the water. <laughs> Now it's time for Cole's Notes. Well, it's the first weekend in May, our first trip to Sable Falls Provincial Park. It's actually a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, I think it helps a lot too that the park was probably about 10% capacity, um, especially in the area that we're in. We're in the uh, West Campground at Site 33. Mm -hmm. uh, there weren't many people around us at all. Maybe a handful of other campers. Yeah, so it was really nice. Uh, however, I could imagine in the summertime this place would be packed, mm -hmm. um, and the sites are pretty close together, pretty close together, pretty open, and uh, I imagine it would get uh, very busy in here, and uh, not a lot of privacy at all. But all in all, it's it's not a bad little campground. Um, we really enjoyed the falls and kayaking Salvo River. If you are into water sports, as, such as kayaking or canoeing this is probably not a bad park to come to but for anything else there's not anything for biking other than just going through the campground itself and hiking there was one trail that was two point two and a half kilometers two and a half kilometers and took us maybe 45 minutes but it was a beautiful trail to hike yeah and even had a bit of a lookout which surprised me because mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty flat around here but it was a, a bit of a lookout over the, uh, the Sable River that was pretty nice when we were um kayaking the, so the north or the top part? Yeah, uh, from the top of the falls going uh, going upstream. Yeah, it almost was like being up north in some parts. I was very surprised. I kind of thought it might be going through like farmland and stuff, but no, it was woods all around. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every now and then you'd realize you're close to a road when you hear a car go by. But uh, it seemed pretty secluded there. Uh, I did prefer kayaking 
from the top of the falls yes. going upstream. Me I too. preferred doing that rather than uh, we also went at the bottom of the falls mm -hmm. and uh, went out towards Lake Huron. Uh, that that wasn't as nice. And that way, when you're doing that way too, you're doing the easy paddling in the beginning, mm -hmm. going downstream, yep. and the hard paddling at the end. I prefer to do it the other way around, such as when you start at the top of the falls. Mm -hmm. We didn't go as far in the bottom because it was really windy and it was hard to paddle back, so we didn't go as far. Yeah. <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised at the top of the falls. Like, the water's going pretty fast uh, right now, uh, as you can see by the falls. Um, but paddling upstream was actually very easy. I thought it was going to be a lot harder. It was mm -hmm. very easy paddle upstream and a uh, real nice leisurely paddle coming back downstream. And I like that the comfort stations all look brand new. There's three comfort stations, um, one in each campground and one in the day use area. Um, and vault toilets all throughout, so there was no shortage of that, which was a good thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's no store, there's no, no visitor center. center. So uh, not much in the line of activities, nothing like that. It's basically more of a home base. If you'd like to go to Sable Beach, this would be a good place to stay. Yeah, in the summertime, Sable Beach is a rocking place to go. Like, uh, the beach is always packed, so if that's what you're into, you want to come down to a really happening place, a place with a lot of activity, uh, you, you go down to Sable Beach and uh, a lot is going on there and then you've got the strip down at Sable Beach with all the shops and uh, mm -hmm. and restaurants and bars and things like that. Um, yeah, you can do all that and this is a nice close home base. And uh, it's only about three kilometers away so you can ride your bike and you're going on, uh, you're not going on any major highways at all, you're just going on small streets. So it's uh, not a bad bike ride. Now you do have to realize if you do to go to Sable Beach though, it is all paid parking. There isn't any designated parking uh, because you have a park pass or anything. It's all paid parking. Mm -hmm. um, you're close to Southampton and Port Elgin <clears throat> as well if you want to go into those towns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we liked it. Uh, it's, it's certainly... Uh, it's not a place you'd spend a week or maybe just a weekend, a few days. Right. It's a small park, Very nice small. to visit. You can do walk a, the whole park. Yeah, do a quick exploration of it, and that's nice. But uh, other than that, there's not a whole heck of a lot to do. Oh, we forgot to mention, is there canoe rentals here? Canoe, kayak, and I believe pedal board. Pedal? Paddle. Pedal. Not paddle. Pedal. With your feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. paddle. With your feet. They have those rentals, and that's uh, by the top of the falls. There's a spot to do that. Okay. So, overall, for a rating. Um, uh, we haven't discussed this a whole lot, but... Um, maybe a seven? Yeah, I think a seven. Like, we, I mean, we had a perfectly beautiful weekend, which made it that much better. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't a nice weekend, it probably would be a lower rating. Yeah. And the river with the paddling, that, that helped a lot with the score because uh, that yeah. was a pleasantly surprising, nice paddle that I really wasn't expecting uh, in a built-up area, pretty much. Yeah, we, we liked a park that has good kayaking. Yeah. And this was worth it. So the final... Uh, the final number is seven. Seven. There seven. it is. Still using last year's graphic. Yeah. Gonna stick with that one. That's it. Okay. I think. And uh, next week we're gonna be going to Craig Leith Provincial Park. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give that a shot. Uh, four nights, five nights. Yeah. Yeah. One of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.